Driving down this old road, now I see trees of gold and red and brown, and there's miles and miles of fresh blue sky, and we're happy because we're free. My name is Ray Venon Husbandes, and I'm a singer songwriter. I play guitar, banjo, a bit of mandolin, and I sing. Even if the wind should change and the sky turns grey, we'll still carry on with smiles on our faces. Cause the one thing that'll never change is feeling free. I'm 21. I'm, I'm 22 in June. <laughs> Scary. Playing some of my own songs today um, at the Cat Weasel Club. Cat Weasel has its own special magic. You never know quite what you're going to get. As musicians, some poetry. Well, it's unique. And yeah, Cat Weasel's ace. It's definitely the longest running <laughs> of itself. <laughs> you never quite know what might get thrown at you. I've seen someone strip, <laughs> which is quite an interesting um, show to put on. It's like sort of old fashioned variety, really. Fuzzy, welcoming, uh, inspiring, I think. Inclusive. A little bit kind of shabby, glamorous. Pretty much anything goes at Cat Weasel. That's what we are. We're an open mic without the mic. We're just open. I'm Matt Sage, and I'm a musician and a songwriter. And my inspiration in setting up the Cat Weasel Club was a night that I used to attend in Earl's Court at the Troubadour. And it was a very thriving, buzzing, nurturing environment. We all hung out, we all went on tour together, we all wrote songs together. I'm sure a few of us had babies, I can't remember. I really just took an ember from the fire of the Troubadour and started a new fire here in Oxford. And that fire is still blazing 15 years later. Hey, Hello. good evening. Uh, can I sign up for the open mic? What's, what are you planning? Poetry. What's your name? Athos. Athos. Hi, Athos. I'm Matt. Hi, Matt. Well, at some point, I'll say you're next and give you a tap on the shoulder. Cool. Excellent. Okay. The Cat Weasel Club is a very simple concept, very old idea. People come together and different people will come forward and they will recite a poem or they'll sing a song or they'll share whatever they've got to share and everybody else will shut up and listen. OK, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this here unique rendition of the Cat Weasel Club. Um, you're most welcome. Uh, of course, we've got, no, uh, we've got no wires, we've got no tricks up our sleeve, we've got no PA, so we really uh, rely on uh, your audio participation to make this thing go. For me, me personally, I needed a space like this in order to feel at home. And it wasn't here. I mean, I think that's obvious. Doesn't everything get invented because someone decides that that thing should exist and doesn't? You know, when I got here in 1994, the Oxford music scene that I found was quite closed and quite competitive um, and not at all nurturing. It was a surprise a little bit to me. And I thought, well, where's the, where's the heart? Where, where are the people writing songs and where are all the bedroom minstrels? You know, where are all the geniuses that, you know, in this town, in any town, who weren't bothered about packaging and making pop videos? They were making art, but there's no outlet. There's no forum for these mad makers. I'm one of those, and I wanted to meet all the others. I met loads of fantastic people. I mean, I really have crafted for myself an amazing role in my community. I am very open, but with the right audience, it's OK. I like people to feel that they know me when I'm, you know, singing and doing my thing up there. One of the things about our ethos, not that it's written down anywhere, is something about suspending your judgment at the door. You know, like in the Wild West, you'd hang your guns at the door of certain saloons, you know. With a Cat Weasel Club, you say, well, I'm going to come open. I'm going to allow myself to be surprised by something. And he gets in his van with the windows down and the music loud. 
cigarette in his hand and a basket of birds in the back of the van. And he was a man of the blue open sky, lifts the lid of the basket and lets those birds fly. My name is Sam Willits. I've been performing reading poems for more than 10 years. Quite a few of the poems in my collection, which, is, uh, which has just been published, were written in order to have something to read at Cat Weasel. So I wouldn't have the material for that book, I think, without Cat Weasel. And I certainly wouldn't have the confidence to, to get up and read. My first baptism readied me for those to come. The water roared, receiving me. My lines sing, mast, hull and spar. The cold furrow I plough, the bones that lie under. Hope is my hanger-on. Ocean's barbed emblem, I am crossed memorially, but I hold a ring. I hold a ring here. Best man in the wedding of the sailor to the sea. A lot of the time in our lives, in the modern world, we're on the defensive from quite aggressive interruptions. And this is a space where you can actually let that go. You know, it's, it definitely has a healing nature. That's why it's still going. I think the Cat Weasel Club is resolutely a community. It's a community first, I think. Um, it's church for a lot of people who go there. Uh, it's been a really beautiful night, uh, and it's far from done, because uh, behind me and around me, in fact, are the magical telling the bees. Please give you a round of applause for telling the bees. My name's Andy Letcher. I'm Colin Fletcher. I'm Jane Griffiths. I don't rhyme with them. <laughs> and we are collectively three quarters of the band Telling the Bees. So we, we met at Oxford's legendary Cat Weasel Club. and keep on repeating itself in Cat Weasel, how different musicians play and then, you know, a few months later you'll see them perform a duo and they've met in there. The audience changes a bit, but there are still people who, like us, have been going there for 10, 15 years and you feel like you're playing to your, your home crowd. We're all off travelling and playing gigs other places and sometimes that can be a thankless task. You come home and you play in Cat Weasel and it's like, yep, it is home. It feels like a familiar place to land. It's my social life. <laughs> it's the only time I get out. It is. I mean, it is, actually. You know you're going to see your friends there and meet new ones. Like your wife or your husband. <laughs> your husband. I'd been away living in Australia for a while and I came back to Cat Weasel the first time I visited. Colin was on stage playing double bass and it was beautiful. And uh, that evening, I had my first proper conversation with Colin. And of course, we are now married, so... I don't think Jane was looking for a husband. <laughs> I certainly wasn't. Well, yeah, we, we spent quite a bit of time talking that evening. Yeah, that was a pretty special Cat Weasel. It was. <laughs> and a few weeks after that, you and I were playing tunes at Cat Weasel together. Oh, that's right, yes. Um, then it wasn't very long before we actually got together. Still playing tunes as a guitar and fiddle duo. <laughs> I'm Bill. I do the door, I make the stage look pretty, and every now and then I get the pleasure of getting up and performing something that I've felt an urge to do. It's not a one-way thing. Here you're not just putting out, you, you do get something back. Sometimes there's a bit of friendly banter, sometimes it's just the appreciation. It's completely separate from the rest of my life. I'm a building manager in a nice suit and tie. And this is me in my real world. It's bloody hard crossing that line and facing a bunch of people. I've seen people who've come for ages and then one day they'll get up and they'll do something that otherwise they wouldn't have done. It helps people evolve. I've heard so many people saying thank you because without the space I never would have 
done this. I never would have had the balls to get up and perform. I can remember feeling envious of the people performing. I mean, I admired it and I also envied it. And it's quite likely that I was, that I bitched about it and said it was hippy dippy. And then I think it just occurred to me that, uh, you know, I could do it. I could get up on that stage and have a go. I buy in my to the destiny. Hello, I'm Edward Pope. I've lived in Oxford for a rather long time. Long sword in the gravestone. My job for the last five to ten years has been as a life model. I did get naked at Catwee's a few times and then um, there's this guy Rupert, he does this striptease along with Sufi poetry. It's just an act worth seeing. Uh, he, he kind of stole my thunder and that, so I haven't bothered to get naked ever since. To the destiny of friends, you see it was the second year. When I got up on the stage with this ukulele, I buy myself. Even though I was so bad and it was a really cheap instrument and so on, that the audience absolutely loved it and loved me kind of exposing myself, as it were. If you can expose yourself and feel relaxed about it, that's almost the art of creating that intimacy of the performance. Like shadows in the night, but as we journey on. Quite a lot of the songs I've written and so on have been about personal things in my life. And you see the other performers, you know, blossoming and um, you know a bit about their private lives almost. You're bound to really, you know, because they give it away in songs. I am very open, which I realise is dangerous, I suppose. But with the right audience, it's OK. I think I judge it with audiences, actually. If, I'm fe if I can feel that they're quite a caring, kind audience, then I can really relax and let my guard down. But I like people to feel that they know me when I'm, you know, singing and, and doing my thing up there. Sometimes it's almost embarrassing to see somebody get up on stage and, and say something really personal. It's amazing that, that anybody can get up and, and, I don't know, perform a song they've written that day about something that obviously is really personal to them. Or But also or... that's what is so moving about Cat Weasel. I mean, I think all yeah. of us have probably mm. been in floods of tears at Cat Weasel on occasion because somebody has done something that is so revealing and so vulnerable, and to see a human being do that is mm. extraordinary. Again, it's a fine balance, isn't it? Yeah. Because we, we live in a confessional culture where we feel that we only exist if, if we're confessing on Facebook and Twitter. And... But, again, honest performance is real enough that the audience is brought along with you and not pushed away by your revelation. OK, please welcome Ben and his mystic fiddle to the stage uh, to give us a bit of his uh, scratchery scrapery. Ben. Is, uh... I'm always asked, when you, you have to go in this year, when you're going in for X Factor, um, never. Is this not my cup of tea? Where you get to at the end of it, I, I wouldn't want that. You know, the whole kind of... having songs written for me, having to look a certain way, having to do these pop videos and... Because they're looking for a pop star, aren't they, really? And the whole kind of... TV thing, life story... I want to, I've always wanted to be a star, this is my dream. Crying on TV. And, you know, nah. <laughs> I can't do that. I just know there's a huge amount of that is about humiliation and about competitiveness. Uh, the idea that there's a winner. OK, well, if there's a winner, it means there's 9,000 losers. I'm not interested in supporting a culture in which 9,000 people are made to feel that they're losers. I'd much rather nurture everyone's individual talent 
that they've got to bring and make a space to venerate that. Personally, I think the cat weasel is the only place that I've felt that I have been hurt by the majority of the, if not everybody, in the room. When you realise everyone's facing you and they're silent, it's a kind silence, but you kind of think, oh, goodness, am I really prepared for I haven't, I haven't practised. Well, I think this. I haven't practised. If they're going to listen to me, I should really... I should really know what I'm doing, really, you know. People do come there to listen and to appreciate. Listening is an art form. To really listen, I mean, in conversation, in relationship with people, the idea of really being listened to is incredibly powerful. Many of us don't experience that in our lifetimes. The audience, the listener, is, is, is giving themselves to you is really giving you their attention. You'd better step up to the plate and give them something worthwhile. And, and one of the, I think, very powerful aspects of coming together in this kind of environment is that you reconnect with yourself and each other through the performer. It's more than just a shared experience. It's a shared experience of something fundamental. There's only one story, and that's the human story, and you'll find it in songs and you'll find it in poems and you'll find it in stories and you'll find it in enactments but you are resonating with it all the time the ultimate fairy tale we human beings have gathered under the stars for as long as we've been here and what we're recreating on a thursday night in oxford is really the same thing we can't light a fire in the room so we'll just have a fire coming from the stage that will reflect aspects of the human story to us, but we'll be sitting around that fire, nonetheless, having this profound shared experience. Yeah.